What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. And also, hope you guys enjoy the Diablo 2 Remastered gameplay. You know, I, I kind of figured I'd, I'd throw in a different style game. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. So let me know if you do enjoy the gameplay in the comments. And also, I want to give a quick thank you to everyone for all of the support on the channel recently. The sub count has been going ballistic. We're at 410,000 subscribers right now and it's super awesome so thank you all so much for supporting and tuning in sorry I've been MIA for a little while I've been working really hard on a over two hour long video for my second channel so keep an eye out for that that's coming very soon but without further ado let's dive right into this video so this is a classic one dude I was listen I don't know why I haven't told this one sooner because honestly it's a banger but let's dive into it so on this particular day, this took place back in my junior year of high school, which, as most of you guys know, was a, a period of my life where I, I was on full demon time. There was just no stopping me from doing anything, right? And on this particular day, I was at school, and it was coming up to the weekend, right? It was a Friday, and I had gym class, and, you know, I'm chilling out, and I'm kicking it with Ashton, and also a kid who we're going to call Jeff, who is in my gym class. Me, Ashton, and Jeff would kind of just walk around and fuck around during gym, and we wouldn't really participate very much. And we were sitting on the bleachers and talking a little bit, and Jeff mentions that he's going to a party over the weekend. Now, of course, this perks my interest up, and I'm like, yo, dude, I'm down for this. Like, listen, growing up in Illinois, if you're outside of Chicago, there's three things to do for fun, okay? A, you go to a house party, which half the time is just a bonfire. Uh, B, you go steal things from stores. Or C, you smoke weed in a forest preserve. Or D, you just drive around. Like, I, that is the true, like, suburban Illinois experience, okay? That is how growing up is when you are not living in the actual city of Chicago. And I don't want to hear all the motherfuckers 20 minutes out in the suburbs. No, embrace it like I am, all right? You're not from Chicago, all right? It's the damn suburbs, all right? But either way, back on topic. So, we're sitting here, you know, and we're chatting it up on the bleachers, and Jeff mentions this party. And I realized at this point that I didn't have Jeff on Snapchat yet. He was a guy who, you know, I'd, I'd seen at some functions and hung out with here and there, but I never had him on any social media. Or I, I don't even think I ever got his number. I think Snapchat's the only place I ever got him on. And it was because of this particular day. So I add him on Snapchat, and I'm talking to Ashton, and I'm like, yo, dude, let's link up and go to this party later. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let you know for sure. So we get out of school and I get home and I Snapchat Ashton. I hit him up and I'm like, yo, dude, like, what's the word on this party? You want to go tonight or what? Ashton tells me that he's not able to go on this night. So I'm like, all right, no problem, whatever. You know, I'll, I still want to go to this, so I'll find some people to go with, right? So I hit up Jeff again and I'm asking him, I'm like, yo, dude, wh what's the address? Like, what's the word? Where this at? He gives me all the intel on it. Party's starting up at seven. So you know, not early enough to, you know, kind of get there, get settled before it's dark, but also late enough to give me time to plan things out. So I'm hitting people up, and I, I assemble the dream team, all right? I assemble the Avengers for this party. It is myself, Sam, and Bill, the man himself, who, by the way, for those guys who've been watching this channel, this will be news for you, uh, Bill lost his virginity. So let's give a big round of applause to Bill. This just happened recently. Um... My man, all right? But either way, back on topic. So, we're chilling, and, you know, I, I hit them up, and they agree to come with me. They're like, yeah, dude, like, I got nothing better to do. Let's go to this party. So, I go pick up Sam. I pick up Bill. And with me, I bring a nice little party kit. You know, of course, as you guys could probably guess, I had the weed. I had about an eighth, which was actually a fairly decent amount for me back in these days. But also, I had a little bit of molly, right? Not a little bit. I actually had a good amount of molly. I think I had like four or five caps, all point two caps, sitting at my house at this point. I, I had a pretty nice amount because this was during my molly phase, dude. I, I'll shit you not. The molly that Ashton had was so head and shoulders above any other molly I've ever done. It was insane, dude. It actually made my face melt every time. So this was like peak molly consumption phase for me. And of course, I hit them up and I, I bring my molly, I bring my weed, and I hit the road. 
I pick up Sam and I pick up Bill, and we got a little bit of downtime before we get to go to the party, you know? It's about 5 o'clock at this part, er, at this point, pardon me, and the party doesn't start until 7. So we chill out in my car for a little bit, we pre-roll some blunts, we match, we smoke up, and everyone's got the party kits, everyone's bringing the weed. I'm the only one with the molly, but it's fine, because they threw me money to roll. So, you know, I had a little extra cash in my pocket, and all was well. I popped a cap, they each popped a cap of molly about maybe 30 minutes before the party, and after we'd smoked a little bit in my car, right? So, it's 6.30 at this point, and we're ready to rumble. We've got our molly down the hatch, we've still got plenty of weed rolled up, ready to spark at this party, and we're getting excited. We don't really know whose party this is, we don't know many of the people at this party, but we don't really give a fuck. All we knew was that Jeff was there, and I went to school with Jeff, so how bad can it be? Granted, the party was a little ways away. It was a, it was like a 30-minute drive. So if, if I remember correctly, I remember it was definitely not in our town, that's for sure. So when we got there, we kind of realized that most of the people, if not all at this party, I didn't know who the fuck they were, bro. I get there, and I'm trying to find Jeff. We, it's, you know, there's no one, like, guarding the door or anything. So, dude, I hate those parties, bro. When you go to the party, and they have some dickhead acting like he's letting you in the fucking VIP at the club, standing at the door, hey, man, <laughs> hey, man, uh, how, how many, dude, how big's your party, dude, let me seat you. Shut the fuck up, and let me come in and get, I brought drugs, all right? But either way, we get to this party, and it's, it's open door, just pop on in. And we come in, and it's, it's a fairly small little one-story house, you know? Not a house that you'd typically think of to throw a party at. At least from the front, you know? At least from looking at it walking in. But we get inside, and there's a good amount of people here, right? And Sam just so happened to bring a backpack with all of our goodies in it. He had the bag, and I didn't want to lose shit out of my pocket, so we all threw our weed in Sam's bag, right? We're sitting there. We walk into this party. And, you know, even before walking in, there was a good amount of cars parked out front, but I wouldn't say there was enough cars where, like, a neighbor or, like, someone driving past would be like, oh, yeah, they're, they're having a party there, you know? Like, it, it was a, a fairly light gathering, I'd say. Like, definitely less than 50 people. Like, probably, like, I don't know, probably maybe 30 people at this party total, so... You could call it a party, you could call it a get-together, I don't know, it was a fun time. But we get there. And we realize that almost nobody's in the actual house. Like, the front door is wide the fuck open, dude. We just walked right in. But there is damn near nobody in the actual house. So we start kind of walking through the house. And how it's laid out, you walk in, and there's this living room, right? And then to the right, they have this hallway with all these separate rooms and shit. And then you walk straight through the living room, and you get to the kitchen. And then the kitchen leads to, like, the back area, right? So we walk through the kitchen, and there's the back door wide open, too. And that's where everyone's kicking it. We come to realize pretty quickly that this is not a party, this is a bonfire. And right as we make it out to the backyard, I start feeling that fucking molly, dude. I'm coming up and I'm feeling great. What was really disorienting about this party was that they had a lot of speakers set up, but none of them were synced. So there was just like a different guy on aux in every part of this fucking property, dude. Like you go in the living room, there's some dickhead playing fucking Future. You go to the backyard, they're playing like Cardi B, not Cardi B, I don't know, dude. Whatever the fuck they were playing. I don't remember what music they were playing, bro. You could, you could fill in the blanks for that part, right? They were playing music is the moral of the story, right? You go out back and they're playing different music, dude. They got different music at damn near every section of this fucking house, right? So we're sitting there. And we're out in the backyard, and I'm starting to feel this shit. I look over to Bill, and Bill's already sweating, dude. Bill always wears a, a straightforward baseball cap, dude. And you could tell when the drugs are hitting Bill when he takes the cap off. And Bill had his cap all the way off, and he's fanning himself with it. And I'm like, bro, it's like... It's like fucking April, dude. Like, 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 it's really not that hot, you know? But he's sitting there fanning himself, and I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, this is good, Molly. So... We kind of walk over to the bonfire, and we sit down and get situated, and we didn't recognize pretty much anyone around this bonfire. Mind you that the reason for this, you know, the reason for this was, was that I went to a different school than a lot of my friends. I went to an alternative school, and that's how I met Jeff. The people that went to my alternative school weren't all from my school district. So, like, a lot of these people I never went to school with, I never met. I don't know who these people are. These were, like, more Jeff's friends and shit. So we're sitting there, 
And we're gathered around the bonfire, you know, and and most people there are pretty chill. You know, there's a couple of people who are kind of rowdy, kind of drunk, but most people there are pretty nice. We end up sitting down and it's it's myself. I remember Bill in the middle, of course, because God forbid he talked to a woman and then Sam on the far end. Sam has this, you know, this little blonde girl, little pretty blonde girl sitting next to him, and he's just, he's going crazy, bro. Sam is not the, the smoothest talker, but this man off the molly is horny, and that's all he needs. So he's sitting there talking this girl up, and I, I kind of lean over, and I tap, and I'm like, yo, Sam, dude, like, you, you should pass me a blunt, dude, like, let's spark up. So he's like, oh, yeah, for sure, dude. So he opens his backpack, and he pulls out one of the packs of Swishers that we had and passes it to me. I pull a blunt out of that pack, and I spark it up. Now listen, this is going to be a controversial take that I know my comments might not be a fan of, but when I'm at parties, or especially like at at a bonfire, if I spark some weed, I'm not passing that shit to strangers, because it turns into a 20-man roto, and I never see my blunt again once I let go of it. Like, if you're sitting around a campfire... They're just going to keep passing it to the next guy and be like, oh, just let my one more homie hit it. So I have a very strict, like, if you didn't come to the party with me, you're probably not hitting my weed kind of rule, you know? Unless I'm going to a party where I'm trying to make friends, you know, where I'm like, okay, I didn't even come with anyone. I'm going to I'm gonna go out of my way to make new friends. But here, I was just kind of trying, I was looking for a place to kick it. I was looking for a place to vibe. And if someone matched me, then fuck yeah, let's pass these blunts around. But I'm not, I'm not over here pulling some Santa Claus shit, passing around free weed you know so we're sitting at this bonfire and we spark up and i remember i get mondays on the blunt and i pass it to bill and then bill passes it to sam now the girl sitting next to sam asked to hit it and this is why i stressed that why i don't pass my blunts at bonfires sam passes the blunt to blonde shorty she passes the blunt to the girl next to her all of a sudden the blunt is three blocks away damn near going to prison I don't know where the fuck my blunt went. He could be getting arrested. Never saw the guy again. After that, I leaned over to Sam, and I'm like, Sam, dude, um, let's keep these blunts between us three, you know, for sure. And he's like, oh, yeah, for sure. So we're sitting there for a little bit, and we realize that everyone's got these brews, but, you know, we don't have any, so we want to go find some beers. Like, where's the beer at? Maybe we could, you know, let someone tap a blunt to pass us some beer or something, you know? So we kind of get up, and we go back inside after that first blunt. And we're looking around for the beer. And Sam, hey, he was doing pretty good with this blonde girl. He, She came with us when we came inside. He kind of tapped her and was like, yeah, come on. So we all go inside, right? And we're chilling inside for a little bit. And we're trying to look around and find the beers, dude. I'm rolling pretty hard at this point. The blunt sent me to Zupiter. I'm feeling that warm, tingly feeling going through my veins. I'm bussing. My jaw is clenched, dude. That's how you know it's good shit. I remember after we left this party, I had to stop at Walgreens and grab gum because my jaw was fucked, dude. Super locked. Like, I was on meth mode, dude. I was on, I was in Tweak Galaxy, but it was fantastic. So, we're inside this party looking around for some beers. And on the counter, we spot a nice good old 30 rack of Bill's favorite, the Bush Light. Bill is ecstatic at this point. He's like, dude, they got they got the bruise, bro. I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I mean, it's beer, you know, whatever. So we go over and we're about to grab a beer, you know, and this guy comes over and he's like, yo, dude, like, like, those are my beers, man. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, uh, could, could we grab one, you know? And he's like, no, nah, man, uh, you can't, dude. And I'm like, well, you know, what if what if you let you hit our weed? Like, can we grab some beer? This guy's like, nah, bro, sorry, man. I can't, like, I wasn't expecting this many people. So I'm talking to this guy for a little bit, and he's kind of being a dick, dude. Like, I'm like, hey, man, we're at a party. Like, we could go get more beer. We have money. We have weed. It's not like we showed up empty-handed, you know? Like, let's figure something out. But he's, like, the way he said no was kind of a dick move. And I come to find out that this is the guy who's, like, hosting the party. But this isn't his house that he's hosting it at, which kind of made a lot of sense because I'm looking around this house and I'm like, bro, do this guy's parents not give a fuck? Are they out of town for like six months? Because this place is going to be fucked by the end of the night. Like this guy's having a bonfire, bro. Whoever lives here is going to know that someone was here, right? Like, like a group of people. I'm talking to the guy a little bit, you know. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm I'm a little pissed that he won't share, but at the same time, I'm rolling, so I'm not going to get mad or anything. I'm, I'm just vibing, dude. I'm feeling good. So I'm chatting it up with the guy, and it turns out that he's the one hosting the party, but it's not his house. He's house-sitting for one of his neighbors. As soon as that is said to me, it's like my, my demon light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, bro, 
This guy just denied me beer, and he also told me he's throwing a party at a house that isn't his. I look over to the boys, and the only thing running through my mind is, gents, we're stealing tonight. So, we, we kind of walk out of the kitchen, and we go over to the living room, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, the, you know, the, the homies are kind of blown. Bill's really blown because he wanted some damn bushies, dude. He wanted some bush lights, bro. And we're sitting in the living room just kind of hanging out. And the living room is the, the thinnest part of the house. There's really nobody in there. There's, like, a, another group of, like, three people sitting over in a corner. But, like, they weren't paying attention to us, and we weren't paying attention to them. So we're sitting there talking, and we're like, dude, this is kind of dry. Like, we're rolling, and I feel like because we're rolling is the only reason this is even fun. Like, everyone's sitting around the fucking bonfire at, like, 7.30, 8 p.m. and drinking bush light. They're not even playing beer pong. Like, they're, like there's no... They're, they're playing questionable, like, like shit you'd hear on fucking Kiss FM, dude. Like, like iHeartRadio-ass music, bro. Like, just some fucked, fucked music. Like, someone went on Spotify and went on the recommended playlist and just hit shuffle. And that's what's bumping at this party. So we're sitting there and we're like, damn, dude, I don't know. So I get up and I'm like, boys... I got to go to the bathroom, you know, like I got to find the bathroom in this place. I got to take a nice, nice MDMA piss. I'm not even drunk yet, dude. And I'm barely stoned. So I'm, I'm not having a hoot here. So I get up and I go find the bathroom down that curvy hallway that I mentioned earlier. And down that hallway, I pass the opportunity of a lifetime. I pass the Omega Lick. Not the Omega Lick, but a, a Lick nevertheless. Now, it wasn't an Xbox One. Everyone calm down. It was an Xbox 360. But this was back in like 2016 when you could still get like 80 or 90 bucks for a 360, right? I walk down the hall and as I'm going towards the bathroom, which I see at the end of the hall, there's this open door to a bedroom. And in this bedroom is an Xbox 360 sitting there, all ripe and ready for the picking. So I walk past and I just kind of see it out of the corner of my eye. And I'm like, okay, and I get to the bathroom. I take a piss, I come back out, and I go sit down with the homies again. I'm like, boys, how lame is this party? I'm looking to them, and I'm kind of asking. They're like, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of shitty, it's whatever. Like, maybe some more people will show up later, but for now, it's, yeah, it's kind of whatever. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, listen, let's give it a little more time, see if any, you know, any fun happens. Maybe, I don't know, a fight goes down, or like, liquor shows up somehow, or, you know, something happens. And if not... There's an Xbox in that room unattended. And the boys' eyes light up. Sam and Bill are excited. I'm excited for them, and I'm excited for myself. This is a lick right here. This is this is weed for us. This is liquor for us. We already had some money and some weed, yeah, but the more the merrier, you know what I'm saying? And also, I was a total scumbag with no morals back in high school, so keep that in mind. Is this something I would do nowadays? Definitely not. But back in the day, I was a drug addict scumbag, so uh, anything goes. So, we're sitting on this couch, and we spark up our next blunt. And this is what really set me off. I spark up the blunt, and the guy who denied us beers comes in and tells us that we can't smoke in the living room. He's, like, super mad about it. Like, I'm not talking, like, yo, you guys can't smoke. He comes in, he's like, yo, dude, you can't smoke inside. Like, what the fuck? Like, what kind of house do you think you're in? I'm sitting here, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, I don't know. It looks like a Section 8 house, bro. Like, I, I think we could smoke in here, bro. But he's all fucking, no, no, no. He's he's being a dick about it. And I didn't like this guy's attitude to begin with. But I was rolling. But now at this point, my ro my vibe is almost completely killed. My roll has been shot down, dude. I have been smoked, dude. I have been shot out of the sky. Like I'm one of the ducks in Duck Hunt. Just smoked, okay? So I'm sitting here, and I'm like, all right. Enough is enough. I'm, I'm robbing this. I'm robbing you blind. Your neighbors are going to be pissed when they find out the Xbox is gone. I don't care if their son cries, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, sorry, man. You know, and we kind of go out front. We don't go out back. We decide to go out front instead. We go out front because I had the blunt, so I, I kind of wave Sam and Bill to follow me, and I wave them on, and they follow me out front. And we're standing out front, and, like, no one else is showing up. We're getting pretty certain that this is going to be the only crowd for the night. Maybe a couple other cars will pull up, but that's that. So I kind of look over to Sam and Bill, and I tell them, I'm like, boys, let's get the fuck out of here, but with the Xbox. They're like, yeah, dude, I mean, sounds good. So we start discussing a bit of a plan. There isn't really anyone down that hallway. No one's hanging out in the bedroom. And most of the people were outside anyways. There was still that group of people just sitting in the living room, and there was a decent bit of people in the kitchen. 
But no one at this party knew who the fuck we were, with the exception of Jeff, who I think I'd seen maybe once the entire duration of this party. So I wasn't really concerned. We're sitting there, and I'm like, listen, Sam has the bag. I had the idea. Bill needs to stand guard at the door while me and Sam go in the room. Sam puts the shit in his bag, and we fucking go. We're sitting there, and at first we're like, okay, how are we going to unplug all the cords? We realize it's easier to just take the Xbox and go get the cords ourselves, you know? Like, like one of us had to have old 360 cords laying around, bro. The Xbox One was out by this point, so we weren't worried about that. We just said, say less. It's time. So we go back in the house, and we're chilling out. There's still that group of people over in the corner of the living room, but like I said, they're, they're pretty absorbed in their own conversation and beer drinking. They don't give a fuck about us. So we all, listen... From the outside perspective, it would have looked a little suspect. Three men in a party going towards the bathroom together. Uh, they're either trying to do cocaine or they're in the closet. One of the two. But we weren't trying to do either. We go over to the bedroom. Me and Sam go in. And it's like the you, you feel that adrenaline going, you know? When, whenever you're hitting a little lick, you're like, oh, shit, dude. It's go time now. So I'm, I'm getting ready. In my mind, I'm doing the Birdman hands, you know? I grab this Xbox. I unplug the cords out of the back. And the, the 360s had those fat ass cords and this was one of those old ass like old school 360s bro like this was like the base model like red ring and 360 dude this is one of the old big boys right i don't know i'm surprised this thing was even still running dude i i think the only like base model 360 i've seen last that long was my cousin when i was younger had one that i shit you not i think he still has and it works to this day and that thing, I, I got that, like, I, I hand me down that Xbox to him. Because I remember, I, I got that in, like, 2007 when I was a little-ass kid, bro. That thing's still running. Remarkable. But either way, we grabbed this beefy-ass white 360, old-school thing. Grab the controller on top of it, stuff it into Sam's bag. It barely fit, mind you. But luckily, Sam had a fairly big bag. Zip that shit up while Phil's kind of standing, leaning against the door frame. And come to think of it, if you were in the living room looking back at just seeing Bill leaning against the door frame, that's a little suspect. But it's whatever. We zip the bag up and book it the fuck out of this house. I walk out first, Sam's behind me, Bill's at the back. We walk out of this house, we hop back in my car, and of course, I mean, I I'm excited, but also, like, I'm kind of disappointed because I was just hoping for a good night where I could chill somewhere, have some drinks, and roll really hard. And instead, my entire vibe is just shot down by the guy who was hosting this shit, dude. He wouldn't let me hit the blunt. He, he wouldn't even let me trade some weed or so. Even I even offered to pay for a bush light. Who in God's name is going to pay for a single can of Bush Light? That is just being too friendly. And it's not like that was the only case of beer either. These guys were, listen, these guys had more than enough beer. I just think, I think the guy just didn't like me, bro. Which, hey, it's mutual. But either way, this was a banger. We got off of that 360. And after we got out of this party, we went and split the dividends. Not immediately, because obviously it was too late to go to GameStop at this point. But we waited until the following day, and we all met back up. Sam took the thing home. We all met back up. I picked up Sam and Bill, and we went and sold this Xbox. And, hey, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. It was beautiful, dude. And, oh, dude, it worked out great. I, I had a friend back in high school. I think I've talked about this guy a whole bunch. But I had a buddy who had a who had a brother who wasn't his twin, but they looked so similar they could have been twins. But his brother was like three years older. So he, he would take his ID and it would scan places. We'd send him into the liquor store. We'd send him into pawn shops for us, bro. It was so clutch. So that's exactly what we did on this fine day. And it was beautiful. We gave him like $5 for the favor. And we took the rest of our bread and threw down on some weed and split it. Hey, the ultimate come up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.